Coming up to down the Leipzig Loco, we could go top of the Bundesliga if we beat Schalke second up, but before then, the small matter of the Champions League, and we take on Barcelona. Welcome to episode 103 of the Leipzig Loco with Locomotive Leipzig here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming today we take on Barcelona in the Champions League, our second game in that competition off the back of that. We take on Schalke in the Bundesliga, a win there could potentially see us go top of the table if other results do go our way. So if you're looking forward to that coming up in today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and have been enjoying the series here on the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well it is greatly appreciated but in yesterday's episode we did play our first game in the Champions League against Legia Vorsova also before then we did take on Mines in the Bundesliga if you missed that episode which was off the back of transfer deadline day I'll leave a link to that one over in the top right corner since then we've just played one more Bundesliga game it was at home and we took on Freiburg we were well and truly on the front foot in this game but unfortunately we went to the sheds locked up at nil all but here Amadori bit of a fortunate touch there it finds its way to Benito and he scores a goal there to put us 1-0 up just after half time so eventually we did get some reward for our dominance and then about 10 minutes shy of half time Spasijevic inside the box Villardi he came off the bench Villardi not Villardo as I called him during yesterday's episode he gets his first goal in a competitive game for us and makes it 2-0 in the end a pretty comfortable when we actually should have scored more goals as you can tell by the XG Freiburg did it offer something 13 shots only six on target thankfully with our 16 we were quite efficient putting 12 on target and thankfully did put two in the back of net so it does mean we pick up three more points in the Bundesliga so, so far just that one loss to Wolfsburg and it does mean that we were on 12 points just one behind Dortmund on top of the table hopefully we can pick up some against Schalke in that second game of today's episode and depending on what happens elsewhere on that match day a chance we could move up the table and maybe even get ourselves in to top spot nice and early but first up today our focus does move to the Champions League before then though we have renewed a couple of contracts here at the club at least for the start of next season the first of those is Matthias Tell it does get rid of his 50 million pound release clause that now goes up to 95 million pounds there's going to be a lot of interesting stuff in the contract in terms of all this stuff when it does kick in next year. Plus he gets a little bit of a wage rise going up to £91,000 a week but that should make sure that no clubs can come after him during the middle of the seasons. So that is good keeping Holloway our best player at the club and also quite an important one being homegrown nation as well as that we have got a new contract as well starting next year for Osvaldo Pesaguero our best defender at the club our best centre back with that four star current ability and that five star potential also getting rid of a Champions League release clause there that is good and he will also be getting a decent pay rise I believe it's up to £50,000 indeed it is from £35,000 two of our best players at the club there that we have tied down so hopefully they will be here for the remainder of this series as well as that too unfortunately going to this Barcelona game we are dealing with a couple of injuries thankfully Tezak is finally back he can get involved in the starting lineup in our first game of today's episode and that's actually quite necessary because alongside the injury that Justin Blomay picked up in yesterday's episode Spalyak has picked one up not too major one he is going to come back after this game so he should be available for that Schalke one but unfortunately a little bit of a risk with a tight calf and the same applies for Billy Camillo a bruised shin so it does mean he also won't be featuring in this game against Barcelona and adding to that quite a few of our players are quite injury prone as well we've been pretty good with that so far this season through the first month or so but unfortunately just catching up with us now that we've got about four games before we do have our next international break actually those are proving quite useful here at the moment not too many players being picked for international duty the ones that are are usually our backup rotation players so as I said those international breaks are quite useful because it does mean that for the most part we can play our first team players a bit more until they do get on that heavy workload unfortunately that's something which I think we have to deal with in this first game off Daisy Pizzo our first real big test in a European competition it's the first time we've played a proper big gun and it is Barcelona in the Champions League so far seventh in La Liga albeit still early stages of the season albeit two losses out of five games to Real Betis and Atletico Madrid also started the season in the Champions League with a draw against Chelsea albeit 
that's not too bad a form. We could only manage a 1-0 win today over Legia Warsaw out of Poland, but there are Javi's men, as you can see, still some decent names in that team, in particular in the more attacking midfield with Pedri and Javi, and also they've got a very good left back in Balde, a player that we had at Arsenal on FMOE out at left back. So some good players in that Barcelona team, but hopefully at home we can find a way to pick up some points from this game, albeit this is going to be a pretty tough task for us, our toughest one so far. In European football, I think it is fair to say, even though I suppose we've actually had tougher tests potentially taking on the likes of Bayern Munich and Borussia Dortmund in the league, but so far definitely this will be our biggest European game that we have played, especially for a home one. And because of some of the injury proneness in this team, it does mean there's quite a bit of rotation for this game. De Jong will get a start over Pittman at left back. He is a little bit injury prone, not too bad compared to some others on a heavy workload, and also our centre-backs are, but don't feel like we can risk them in a game against Barcelona, but De Jong, he will start at left-back Manuel in the ball wing midfield role, obviously, with no Blomé, that does mean that Botchin will be the backup there for the moment, while Horvath is the right-back cover, also Bandok over Escobar, heavy workload, he's always quite injury-prone in that situation, also Tezak gets his first start, as I said, with Spalyak being injured at the moment, we're also starting Zoran in the cam role as our newcomer Benitez, this is also on a heavy workload, and as well as that, we're going to give Velardi a start up front in place of Amadori on a heavy workload. So we'll see what the young Italian can do against the team like Barcelona. As I've said, when we signed him, he's got the exact same build as Amadori, not quite as good in terms of the jumping reach, but hopefully can still be a good threat for us from set pieces and coming to this one off the back of that goal to make sure that we picked up the three points in that game that was against Freiburg. Hopefully he can kick on a little bit. It's quite a bit of change going to this game, but hopefully we can still put out a decent performance as we get the action underway. So far, Barcelona have got the first shot off, but coming up to the 10-minute mark, and so far, this one has been a little bit of a quiet game, albeit as I say that, it's a free kick. Javi will put this one far post for Neto. Very good striker, but just puts that one wide into the side netting, so it does stay at nil all, but so far, despite the fact we are dominating possession. Nothing that we've done in terms of attack coming to the halfway point of the first half. Hopefully that can change. We can hopefully pick up some points here from Barcelona. Tough task, but of course this is a home game. As we do finally get a shot off, it is on target. But nothing that we have been shown through the match engine. But now we start to get on the front foot just a little bit more. Starting to get a few more shots off and actually a couple on target compared to Barcelona who so far haven't hit the target at all as we make our way towards the last couple of minutes of this first half. And it looks like just that one free kick highlight that we will get shown, albeit a bit of a concern there. Matthias Tell is on orange injury and a red heart. So unfortunately, I think we're going to be forced here into an early sub in this game. Tunde Musa will come on for him. To be fair, Musa did start that most recent game against Freiburg and did actually play quite well. So not too bad an option off of the bench. And apart from that, everyone else out there despite the lack of action that we have seen, is on a decent rating. So I think the only sub we'll make at halftime is for the slightly injured Matthias Tell. Hopefully that's not too serious. And we'll tell the guys they're actually doing not too bad a job here because so far we've actually got a few shots on target. Barcelona have not. And because of that, we are winning the battle in terms of XG. But early stages here in the second half and the first highlight is a throw into Barcelona just inside of our half. Now Elastia starts to make his way inside the box. De Jong tries to mark him. That one does find Pedri. Thankfully his shot does take quite a big deflection and San Jose can collect that, albeit this highlight is going to continue. We look to play out from the back. Mundoc plays that one up to Manuel. We try and loop that one forward, but unfortunately Barcelona do win that one in the end. Now bad challenge there from De Jong and now Barcelona are back on the attack. Kunde puts one into the mix of the a little bit of ping pong, but thankfully we can clear our lines. Spasijevic does give away a free kick on Freddy De Jong, and they will have a free kick here, albeit not from too close a spot, so hopefully San Jose can make a save, or it will miss the target. He does look for that top right corner, but San Jose, thankfully, does reach that one and keeps it nil all, but Barcelona starting to look a little bit more threatening there, early stages of the second half. We have a free kick there in our favour, but unfortunately, can't quite link up shortly off the back of him. De Jong is back on the ball, plays that to Marcelo. Now, Balde, the very good left back, he will play that one back to the goalkeeper there for Barcelona. Now Marcelo on that yellow card. De Jong up to Pedri. That midfield definitely a strength of Barcelona. We nearly win that one back through De Jong. But unfortunately, nice ball now out there to Jules Kunde on the right-hand side. Plays that one back to Gavi. Floats this one into the mix. When Luan Neto somehow gets his head 
on the end of that one, I thought we had enough cover there to try and deal with that danger, but unfortunately that was not the case. And only a couple of minutes in to the second half Barcelona, they do grab a 1-0 lead when their first shots on target in the game and it finds the top right corner. Somehow Hurtado and De Jong do not beat Neto to the ball and we do go 1-0 down. And to be fair, based on overall stats, it's not too hard to disagree with that. And we make our way towards the hour mark. Now Manuel picks up a yellow card. Time for us to make some subs. We'll take off De Jong been a little bit average, I thought, so far in this game. So Pittman can come on for him. Also, Danny Hermel for Tezak on a 6.4. Bundock's down to a red, so Escobar can come on for him. And also Vochin for the yellow cut of Manuel. So that'll be all our subs remaining for the last half hour of this game. Unfortunately, Danny Hermel has just come on the field and already picks up an orange injury. Hopefully that's not too serious, albeit Spalyat should be back for that second game of today's episode. Here we do take on Schalke. About to make our way into the last 15 minutes of this game and unfortunately still not doing a lot in terms of highlights that we are being shown so with that in mind we'll go a bit wider in attack and also we'll chuck Hermel onto an attacking inside forward as well we'll give a bit of encouragement about to make our way into the last 10 minutes of this game are staying to pick up a couple of yellow cards but I think we'll just risk it so it hopefully helps us grab an equaliser in this game, we have a throw in there down that far side. Zoran plays that one to Sicker in a bit of space. Nice ball there for Danny Hermel, who gets a shot off, but unfortunately just goes wide. That's the chance that we were looking for, but unfortunately can't quite hit the target off the back of that. I think it's now time for us to go full on attack, attacking mentality, and also we'll chuck Vochin on support, and also we'll put Pittman on to attack as well and see if anything does happen in the last couple of minutes of this game. To be fair, they haven't been too much better than us here, Barcelona, but unfortunately... With those shots on target, they did get one past San Jose, and it was a bit of a soft one as well. Neto beating Hurtado and De Jong in the air, and unfortunately, that is the big difference maker. Not a game of many highlights. Our big chance did come late through Danny Hermel, but unfortunately, that early goal in the second half from a ball put into the mixer from Javi does mean that Barcelona do pick up a 1-0 win. A little bit disappointing to not pick up points in a home Champions League game, albeit that was always going to be a little bit of an interesting one, our toughest game so far in a European competition, at least in terms of the quality of opposition. Of course, also no Amadori, that might have been an issue as well, just hoping that giving him a rest in that game does mean we won't suffer any injuries to our important striker at the moment. Does still feel like he is the first choice here at Lokomotiv Leipzig, but unfortunately we suffer defeat in our second game of the Champions League, 1-0 at home against Barcelona. So unfortunately defeating that first game of it today's episode and the news only gets worse of course we picked up two injuries during the course of that game and both of them are going to keep the players involved out for a little while. First up it is Matthias Tell. He went off at half time in that game on an orange injury. Unfortunately a pulled five so it does mean he'll be out for one to six days. It does mean that he'll probably miss most of our games before we do head into the next international break which hopefully he might not be involved in albeit of late. He has been featuring for France just a little bit, but it does mean no Matthias Tell for this next game against Schalke and also probably the next one up in the Champions League, which is against Southampton. And also a little bit less importantly, because of course Spalyak is now back from injury, but Danny Hermel pulled hamstring, so he is out for eight days to three weeks. Also will probably come back at some stage off the back of the next international break. So a couple of injuries, one a lot more serious than the other in terms of our team selection, but hopefully we can pick up the points here, even though we are away from home. We take on a Schalke team who, as of late, as you can see through those previous meetings, we do have a pretty good record against. They are down in 13th early stages in the Bundesliga season. In terms of their team, a couple of players who have caused us a few headaches in the past and the likes of Murder up front. And also, of course, they have one of the players that we did sell in the most recent transfer window, and James Baker as well. In the midfield so far, actually going with a pretty decent average rating of 7.1, so it'll be interesting to see how he gets on against the team that he did spend one year of his career last season as the backup to Sebastian Escobar, but hopefully off the back of their form so far this Bundesliga season. They did beat Hanover like we did, but since then, losses to Eintracht Frankfurt and Mainz as well. It's a draw to Wolfsburg, so apart from that win over Kralobag in the Europa League, their recent form hasn't been too good. Hopefully, even though this one is away from home, we can pick up some points and maybe, as I said at the start of today's episode, might find a way to end this match day in top spot on the Bundesliga table. But we are rotating our team quite heavily going to this game. The only areas that we haven't touched are our defensive midfield 
and goalkeeper from that game that we did play against Barcelona. So apart from that, we are pretty much full rotating in those other areas. We've got Musa on the left wing, Amadori back in, as well as Benito and Spalyak up front. And in terms of defence, this time it is Horvath, Montez, Comedio and Pittman, both our centre-backs, as you saw going to that most previous game. We're on a heavy workload, already quite injury prone. I feel like this is the game that we could potentially give them a rest in and hopefully then they'll be ready for that next one in the Champions League. I think we'll skip over that one. We might come back a little while off the back of that because our matches off the back of that in the month of October don't look too interesting. Things pick up again at the start of November, a few weeks off the back of that international break. But there was Schalke, as you saw before, James Baker in the midfield of interest, also murder a player who has caused us a few headaches in the past. Quite a rotated team, as I said, from that Champions League outing against Barcelona, but hopefully having the likes of Amadori, Benito, and Spalyak back as well. As Pittman at left back does mean we can pick up a decent result early stages. We are on the front foot, but unfortunately Pittman can't pick out anyone in the middle of the park. Interesting pass there from Montez. Thankfully, we do keep that one. And now the ball just inside of the opposition half, albeit San Jose, plays that one out to Pittman. Now we start to find some space and get him behind here, albeit Musa can't quite link up. With Amadori, and now Schalke here get a chance to play their way out from the back. They play that one out, and now Baker is on the ball, picks out Zalazar. We almost get a foot in there, but unfortunately does find James Baker. will be interested to see how our former man does go in this game. Now Banks gets well and truly in behind our defense here. Squares that one nicely for Velazquez, but thankfully his header does come off the corner and doesn't quite find its way into the back of the net. Now we might actually get a chance here to try and do something on the counter-attack, but unfortunately the play just gets broken down a little bit. So still locked up at nil or early stages. Schalke well and truly on the front foot in this game, but thankfully kind of like Barcelona, Get to get a shot on target. Now Musa off a throw in with a really good chance. We work those quite well sometimes from the thrones inside that final third, but unfortunately that time Musa, he hits the post. Big chance there, but it is still nil. All a big chance now for both teams. Schalke might get something going there on the counter attack, but yet again, that highlight does stop. But now about halfway through the first half and this game has been pretty even apart from the fact that yet again, the opposition aren't getting too many shots on target in comparison to us, so hopefully we can make that count at some stage, and now at the half hour mark, there is a highlight, a corner to Schalke, they go far post, thankfully Amadori will head that one away, now Bundok will try and mark Ulrich here on this near side, gets beaten well and truly, takes on a shot, San Jose with a save, and it does fall to the man I did mention pre-game, do some murder, we'll put that one away, it's a simple tapping off the back of San Jose, making the save on Ulrich from a tight angle, maybe Bundok there, could be doing a little bit better defensively. Did show him the touchline to be fair, but just too much pace from Ulrich. Decent save from San Jose, but unfortunately just goes out into a swarm of bodies and Muda is there to tuck that one home. And we do go 1-0 down to be fair. Now Schalke are on top in terms of stats in this game, especially XG already. They have 2 XG. We've got something like 0.4, so definitely need to get off some better chances in this game if we are going to turn this around. And Schalke do have the ball again here off the back of a throw and hopefully no hangover off the back of that loss to Barcelona. We did bounce back well previously from a previous loss this season that of course was against Wolfsburg. Now a poor pass back there from Pittman looking for Camillo and Ulrich plays that one in for Velasquez. He beats San Jose at his near post. We are waiting here though for a VAR check. The assistant referee hasn't put his flag up and unfortunately there's a reason for that because Schalke do make it 2-0. Poor pass there from Pittman. Just not quite enough on it. Murder picks it up. Plays it to Ulrich. And Velasquez gets in behind our defense. And it's been a poor couple of minutes for us here. Against Schalke. A poor mistake there from Pittman. And also kind of Camillo, albeit. I think that was more our left back. Does mean that it is 2-0 just shy of half time. Hopefully we can grab a goal back here before the break. Otherwise that will make our task a little bit more difficult in the second half. And there's a highlight here just before the break. And it is in favor of Schalke Murder. Does try a shot there from outside the box. Unfortunately we try and clear our lines. But Schalke back in position. Baker tries to thread that one through. But thankfully this time picks out one of his former teammates in Tunde Musa. And we get a chance here to play out from the back. San Jose start to make his way. Outside the box, plays that to Camillo and Pittman this time. They link up well. Musa starts to cut inside, plays a nice ball over the top there for Jean Horvath today at right back. Manuel back out to Horvath, tries to play that one over the top of Spalyag, gets hit away, but thankfully Horvath 
does react well and floats one into the mixer. For Amadori, that jumping reach is oh so crucial. It might be the big difference at the moment between him and Vladi, because based on the tributes, Vladi should be better. But good hustle here from Horvath off the back of that ball that did look for Spalyark. Then he floats one into the mixer and Amadori, that jumping reach of 20. Oh so important sometimes for the chances that we do create and the ones that he does put away. And we do grab a goal back just before halftime. And thankfully we do as well, because otherwise Schalke well and truly on top in this game. But thankfully that late goal might just give us a chance in the second half of this game. To be fair, most players out there are on decent ratings. So I don't think we'll make any substitutions just yet. And we'll tell the guys we want a much better performance in the second half. And hopefully we can maybe grab an equaliser nice and soon off the back of that goal just before the break, hopefully that's a big turning point in this game. But so far, Schalke have been the better team in this game. Hopefully, we can make the most of them not maybe taking some of the chances that they should have with that 2.55 XG in the first highlight of the second half. It does come about 10 minutes and it's a front, but unfortunately, Benito gets robbed from behind, albeit Spellyark wins that ball back for us, gets played in nicely there in behind, and he'll pick up his second goal of the season, Tunde Musa, with the assist. And a goal either side of half time. Crucial for us in this one. We've come from 2 0 down to make it 2 all. Spellyark takes that one off James Baker. You love to see it. Nice ball through there, of course. Amadori, I'm pretty sure he was offside, but thankfully Musa plays it for Spellyark. Beats the Schalke goalkeeper there at his near post and makes it 2 all. Albeit right off the back of that, there is a highlight from the restart. And Schalke, they do keep the ball. Bank starts to find some space there. Down that right-hand side, plays one over the top of Murder. Already does get in behind me, mark him tightly. They knock this one to the edge of the box, and James Baker scores his first goal for Schalke. And it's an absolute screamer from outside the box against his former team. Cheers, FM. That is the most FM thing I have seen in a little while, at least since that game we played against Lons in the Europa League semis last week. It's a first-time finish, not even in that left corner, but just too much power on that one for San Jose. And James Baker somewhat comes back to bite the hand that fed him and makes it free to Schalke. And only a few minutes off the back of that, they have another throw in here and will be looking for a cushion goal yet again. And if they get one more in this game, I dare say that will be all she wrote. Baker, nice ball over the top there for Ulrich. He's starting to get a big influence in this game. Is our former man, but thankfully San Jose comes up with a big save. We try and encourage the guys off the back of that, but unfortunately doesn't help too much from stopping this corner. A little bit helter-skelter there inside the box, but eventually we do clear our lines and the highlight does stop. And it might be time for us here to make some substitutions. Montez on a 6.3, so Osvaldo can come on for him. And also a couple of players further forward are on Red Hearts. Escobar can come on for Bundok. Also will take off Spalyark for Tizak and Bilardi can come on at left wing, as that is a position he can play. He's the left wing cover, while Matthias Tull is out with an injury, so we'll make those couple of changes, and hopefully that might help us grab a goal back in the last 20 minutes of this game. A highlight does start. San Jose pumps that one deep. Bilardi can't quite win it in there. It's a little bit helter skelter, but thankfully Bilardi plays a nice ball forward there to Amadori, right on the edge of the box. Plays that one back to Andrew Pittman. Plays that one looking for Tezak. Down that right-hand side, squares it nicely for Benito, who finds the back of the net, albeit he might have just been a slight stride off side. We'll wait here for the VAR check, but it's a chance that we have grabbed an equaliser and just waiting to see what the VAR does say. And the goal has actually been awarded, albeit an eek off the back of that is down to a red heart. But nice ball this from Pittman kind of makes up to that one. He played early that did kind of lead to a shelter goal, but Tezak, First time cross as well. That finds Benito in the center of the box. He taps that one home into the left corner. He's only just on side, but thankfully it is a correct decision. And we make it free all with still about 18 minutes left. Just checking off the back of that on some player fitness. Of course, as we saw, Aniko is on a red heart, but also Manuel. So I think the best idea here might be to bring on Votchin and maybe solidify that more defensive side so we can hopefully hang on here and get something from this game. But to be fair, Schalke can feel pretty hard done by that this game is still all locked up, about to make our way into the last 10 minutes. Cal Votchin does pick up a yellow card, but we are getting deep into this game, still at free all. And just as I was thinking there about maybe going a bit more attacking, there is a free kick in our favour. Unfortunately, Vladi he gets his head on the end of that one, but it's a pretty safe save that for Ramirez and Schalke. They'll pump this one deep, Pittman, 
should control this one. He plays that one forward to Escobar and hopefully we can launch an attack and maybe pinch some points from this game. But unfortunately that pass is we look to get him behind. Doesn't quite link up too well, albeit they play one deep there. Camillo wins that in the air and now we get a chance to do something yet again. Camillo plays that all the way back to San Jose to be fair. A draw here would be enough for us to go top of the table. But that is a shocking tackle on murder from Billy Camillo. He tries to commit murder on murder and we are down to 10 men for the last couple of minutes of this game, albeit having brought on Cal Votchin, we're not actually too badly set up to go too far at the back yet again. So what we're going to do here is pull Votchin back to a centre back, swap him with Andrew Pittman and Horvath last season at times did cover left back on the bench for us. So he can go at left back, Votchin at right back and also we'll pull a Nico back to be a box to box midfielder and we'll chuck Sebastian Escobar as a ball wing midfielder on defence. That should mean we're not too much worse off in terms of our midfield and defence for the last couple of minutes of this game. Also, we'll put a few more players who were on attack on support and just tell our guys to maybe be more disciplined in the last couple of minutes of this game to make sure we come away from this with something five minutes of added time. So hopefully we can hold on and take what would be in the end a decent point from this game considering we have been on the back foot for most of it. And thankfully, that is what we get. Certainly not what I was hoping for before the game, but Schalke did come out in that one and really were on top, as you can tell by the XG. They certainly should have won that game, but thankfully we came back from 2-0 down goals either side of halftime to Amadori and Spalyak. Did give us a chance there, unfortunately. Baker scores against his former club, but then Benito grabs an equaliser. Late red card to Camillo did make that a little bit interesting, but thankfully we just do enough to pick up a point from that one, as you saw before. For now, that might be enough for us to go top of the Bundesliga table. A little bit disappointing that we haven't made the most of it by picking up three points, but as I said, Schalke did play pretty well there. So a point away from home, not too bad at all. And for now, we go top of the Bundesliga table off the back of an entertaining free all draw at Schalke. So a very turn fro game in that second one of it. Today's episode, Schalke, based on stats, definitely should have picked up three points from that game. But thankfully, despite the fact that we also went down to 10 men for the last couple of minutes, we do pick up a point, which did see us briefly go top of the Bundesliga table. Unfortunately, Dortmund later that day, they drew away at Hofer, which did mean they went back above us. But thankfully, other results on that day and also the following day, we Gladbach picked up a win over Wolfsburg. It did mean that we don't drop down the table too much. Actually move up the table on that match day from where we previously were up to second one point behind Dortmund, albeit Bayern, are uh, certainly hot on our heels and also have a pretty good goal differential compared to other teams at this stage of the competition and also quite tight in behind those guys as well. A couple of teams joint with them and Wolfsburg and RB Leipzig not too far away either, but I think that will do it for today's episode. Unfortunately, lose to Barcelona in the Champions League and then a free all draw of Schalke, which looks a bit average on paper, but based on how that game did go, probably not the worst result. If you enjoyed those two games in today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and have been enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. As I said, off the back of this episode, things just get a little bit quieter over the next month or so, obviously next month of October with that international break, as I said, that we are looking forward to with quite a few of our players currently being on a heavy workload. So we'll take on Southampton off camera, even though those guys actually doing a decent job in the Premier League. I say decent, they're top of the Premier League. So that's a very interesting game coming up for us next. Hopefully we might be able to do something there away from home, albeit now that I see that table position. That's a lot easier said than done, but we'll see what we can do against Southampton and also and a couple of games in the Bundesliga against Bayer Leverkusen who are down in 13th and then a couple more tricky ones against Gladbach and Fortuna Dusseldorf will also play the second round of the DFB Pockley against Bochum to be fair. That competition does go on the back burner just a little bit for us this season, of course, having won it a couple of years ago and with Champions League being a bit more financially lucrative and we'll come back, I think, at the start of November all going well for tomorrow's episode. Big game as we take on Bayern Munich away from home. We'll see what the Bundesliga looks like by that stage. And off the back of that, another tricky one away from home, this time in the Champions League, as we take on Napoli. We'll play those games in tomorrow's episode. And until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.